Hello and welcome to our uh, daily devotions in the time of Advent. As we prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ, let the music fill your soul with this very inspiring music by Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, today's passage we're studying is Ezekiel chapter 34, and I'll be reading verses uh, 11 through 16. Let's hear the word of God. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited, inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The imagery of sheep, flocks, and shepherds is used throughout the Bible. The Hebrew word tzon translates to either sheep, flock, or goat. The Hebrew word is used 247 times, and overall in the whole Bible, the word sheep is used over 500 times. Our holy book mentions sheep and shepherds practically from beginning to end. In fact, the image of a shepherd and of a sheep stays consistent throughout, and it's something readers of the old times understood very clearly as it was a common occupation to tend after sheep. Well, my mind wanders quickly to our world today, and I wonder how we relate to 2020 shepherds. It sure wasn't a career option when I was offered different choices in high school. We're probably all good at picturing, picturing an old-time shepherd thanks to artists that have captured the little boy with the sheep around his shoulders, or maybe the little shepherds that are uh, in our nativity scene. On the little country drive I took in France a few years ago, we saw some sheep running forward along the road. The leader seemed to be a sheepdog, who was clearly trained to let no fuzzy beast wander away. The dog was hard at work, yet I didn't see anyone with a long robe and a staff working around that. What is our relationship to sheep and shepherds? As a Canadian, I've owned my share of wool sweaters and socks, but as I put on the warm layers, I don't quite have the wisdom to think of the whole process. I'm just grateful for the heat the clothes provide. I also love ricotta and feta cheese, but I very rarely thank a sheep for that. Even after visiting the town of Rockfort in France and seeing the transformation the sheep's milk goes through before it becomes this smelly and strong mixture of mold and delicious cheese. 
In our consumerism society, we work, we get money, we buy, and we don't think much of the process of everything we are using, other than reflecting on our own work. We sometimes complain that people don't seem to understand all the work that goes into what we do. My husband spends his whole day looking at complicated formulas to help improve the product he's been working on for years, the black box on airplanes. I've witnessed the incredible complexity and endless safety procedures that go into the making of this product, a product that helps improving the safety of air travel by studying crashes and recovering airplanes. But truthfully, I don't board a plane thanking the engineers that devoted their whole lives on the floating machines. Just get me to my destination with no problems, no delays, and if you could make the coach section a little more spacious, then I'll be a little more grateful. There are so many careers out there these days that nobody really knows what anybody's doing. We look at teachers, and we, when we hear them describing their challenges, we often jump in and say, yeah, but you have the whole summer off. Pastor Steve has mentioned once or twice that people have asked him what else he does all week, assuming his main duty is to write a good sermon. Hint, hint, he finds a lot more to do sun up to sundown and beyond. Shepherds today, they are not even on my mind. There are things written in the Bible that don't trigger much connection depending on where we are in the world. For example, we read of famines and it doesn't make us react that strongly because we don't have fear of running out of food like some other cultures do. Yeah, some people do go hungry, but there are abundant resources available, whereas some areas can have no access to food and a whole population can be starving. We don't really know this experience, and we can read these passages without that empathy that comes from experience. Many scripture passages speak of a famine coming on, fountains being dry, and vines not producing fruit. We read this with somewhat detached emotions from lack of understanding. Now, when I read about plagues, I am beginning to relate a whole lot more, and I understand that fear a lot more than I did before COVID-19. But back to our sheep. It is said that sheep have been domesticated somewhere between nine and 11,000 years before Common Era, just a little while ago. And that sheep truly depend on a shepherd to survive. Otherwise, they are nature's snack. Their wool has to be sheared, and they don't survive alone. They are like pets, super docile and gentle, trusting their leader. It's no wonder that sheep are mentioned so much. Even if I have not spent long days with sheep, I don't know what their smells are like or what the feel of their wool might be like. I don't recognize the differences in the way they communicate. I can still understand that God wants to be our shepherd. I'm pretty sure that shepherds find their work easy compared to God's shepherding duties, as we all run astray all the time. I find this year to be particularly relatable. As many of us experience loneliness and solitude, and a longing for a leader that will bring us back all together as a close flock. This year calls us to be humble, to be loyal to God and God alone, to appreciate our pastures that are lush and to know that our shepherd will bring us back together if we can listen long enough to hear the call. Let us truly focus our minds and hearts toward God as God will guide our path toward safety. Let us pray. God, our leader and our heavenly shepherd, through your Holy Spirit, guide us to green pastures Comfort us in our longing. Help us out of our wandering ways so we can find the path you have created for us. Help us to release our need for controlling everything around us so that we may actually let you lead us as you promised to do. As sheep are hopeless without their leader, 
Help us find the strength and the will to put all our hopes in you alone so we can come together as your large flock of loving Christians. Bring light into this month of waiting and give us peace in our hearts as we all seek to honor you in new ways in this year of change. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.